الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدي وحبيبي ونور قلبي وثمرة فعادي تبدى القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها بالقاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المقسومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها المزمل قم الليل إلا قليلا نصفه أو انقص منه قليلا أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا إنا سنلقي عليك قولا ثقيلا إن ناشئة الليل هي أشد وطعا وأقوى مقيلا صدق الله العلي العظيم إبعد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله ودير برادش السيستيس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First let me thank our great creator Allah سبحانه وتعالى for the opportunity that he has given to all of us the first opportunity that deserve to thank our Creator, Allah, is that, my dear brothers and sisters, we all know, we all went to sleep last night, and there are some people who didn't wake up this morning. But He chose you to wake up. That is something to thank Allah for. Not only that, there are certain people they went to sleep, they woke up like you and I, but they did not wake up healthy as you and I today. That is something to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Not only that, there are people who woke up healthy as you and I, but Allah didn't give them the tawfiq to come to the best place and perform this Jum'ah as you and I has been given this opportunity. That is to thank Allah subhanahu on top of that, we also have to keep in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us, that everything we do, He is watching. And that is what taqwa Allah is about. It doesn't matter the size of the action. As He mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Zalzala, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى That is in terms of the size of the action. In terms of the place, he said also in the Quran, doesn't matter where the action takes place. It says in Surah Luqman, إِن تَكُمِ الْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلٍ فَتَكُنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ أَوْ فِي الْعَالَةِ If the action took place in the heavens or the earth, Allah will bring it to your attention, your Maqiyah. That is to know that whatever we do, someone is watching. Whatever we do, somebody is going to hold us accountable. And that is what Taqwa Allah is about. To feel that in every movement there is Allah watching. That is why in Surah Al-Alaq he says, أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَرَى Doesn't he know that Allah is watching? If we all can get to this recognition, realization that somebody is watching me and I will be held accountable, our action will be different, brothers and sisters. A simple example, most of us who drive, as we drive and we see a police sitting on the side of the road, what do we do if we are overspeeding? The first thing we slam our brake, trying to cope with the, with the speed limit, because we know he's watching. And all he's going to do is to, leave, to write you a ticket, that's all. Nothing more than that. Or the worst case is going to take your license away, that's it. not more than that. But we're careful about him because he is watching, or she is watching. If we can keep the same mind that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be the best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to develop this conscious in our life, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And to get to that higher re realization that Allah is watching and He will hold us accountable, Ya Rabbil My dear brothers and sisters, our khutbah today is about the surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Surah Al-Muzzammil. 
where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah he's speaking to his dearest messenger, the Holy Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil. This ayah itself is a different than the normal ayahs in the Quran. But before we go there, let's say when you look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way he talked to people is divided into four categories. Number one, sometimes Allah classified people based on their faith. If they are mu'mineen, Allah called them, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, those who believe. That is group number one. Group number two, sometimes, Ya ayyuhal kafirun. Kul ya ayyuhal kafirun, one of the examples. Talks to the disbelievers, that is group number two. Group number three is general. Whether you're a believer or not, Ya ayyuhal nas. That is number three. Number four is sometimes you speak to our prophet only. However, this one also, they say, is divided into two. Talking to the prophet, there are sometimes Allah talks to the prophet and he meant just the prophet, not you and I. One example, Surah Al-Duha. One example, Surah Al-Ishara. These two surahs, they are Allah talking just to the prophet. Another one, Surah Al-Kawthar. But then there are others that Allah is talking to the prophet, but at the same time he wants us to listen to and take a lesson from that message that is given to his messenger. One of them is this surah, Surah Al-Muzzammil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil. Allah is talking to the Prophet. But he is amazing, different than the other surahs that you can see. Most of the uh, most of the custom of Allah, when you talk to the Prophet, you hear two words are common that Allah uses for Prophet. One, Ya ayyuhal rasul. Two, Ya ayyuhal nabi. That is the custom of the Quran. But then he comes to this particular ayah, No ya ayyuhal nabi, no ya ayyuhal rasul, is ya ayyuhal muzzammil. A completely different name Allah has given to the Prophet. What does it mean of muzzammil? The one who wrapped himself or herself in the garment or blanket. Tazammil is to cover something. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is like every one of us when it comes to night. He covered himself when he sleep. So Allah used that. They said, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil. Oh, he, Rasulullah, who covered himself under that blanket. Allah said, Qum. Qum, in Arabic, it has two meanings. One is, Al qiyam fi muqabil al julus. Somebody sitting, you tell them, Qum, stand up. Someone, now another one, they say, Al Qum. Fi muqabil naum. Somebody's laying down, you tell them, Qum, wake up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word Qum here is not about sitting. No, the Prophet was laying down. And he told them, Qum, wake up, Ya Rasulullah. What is it, Ya Allah? He said, Qum in layla illa qalilan. He said, wake up in the middle of night. Illa qalilan, except the letter of the night. Here what Allah wants to tell him, Ya Rasulullah, your night supposed to be divided into two. You know, most of us, our night is one. And the entire night is for sleeping. Rasulullah, Allah say, Ya Rasulullah, your night should be divided into two. Some part of the night is to sleep and rest, and that is the purpose of night. And Allah said in Surah Al-Naba, I said, Wa ja'alnan layla libasa. We created a night for rest. So a night is for resting, but not for entire night. Allah says, spare some part of the night just to communicate and speak to your Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what Allah is telling the Prophet here. Come in layla illa qalila. He said, you can wake up, Ya Rasulullah, at the all night or accept part of it, a little part of the, <coughs> to take for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give it for Allah. Or another option. Oh, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Nisfahu, you can use half of the night. Divide into two, half for Allah and half for yourself. Right? So Allah said, Even if you wish, Allah said, take one third for yourself and just one of it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about one important music consciousness. And that is what we call Salatul Layl. The importance of night prayer. Rasulullah, because of the importance of this prayer, Allah made Salat of, upon the Prophet six wajibah, not five. All of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a discount. Right? The discount is, we're supposed to make five daily prayers. Rasulullah, he has to do six daily prayers, not five. Why? Because this Salat al is that important. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Ya Rasulullah, it's wajib upon you, not on the others. Because we can't, we even complaining about five daily prayers. We can't even do the five daily prayers. So how would Allah add another one make it six? So Allah said, for you, it's five. But for Rasulullah, it's six. Now this tells us the importance of this Salat al -Lay. But the more come to Adis of the Prophet about the importance of this Salat, the importance of this prayer, that you see the Prophet is talking to one of his companions, his son-in-law, Sayyidina Ali, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, where he said to him, it's a long hadith, but amazing. He was telling him, Ya Ali, Usika bi He said, I want to give you some advices. He says, Fahadha. Memorize them and observe them and keep them to yourself. And then he said, If you fail to do that, to act upon them, Don't blame anybody but yourself. Then he said to him, after he said this to him, he said, Allahumma a'in, Ya Allah, help him. So he can act upon this. Then what was it? The hadith started with the first, uh, the first thing the Prophet told him. He said, Ya Ali, la yakhrujanna fi fika kadibatun abada. Never, under any circumstances, allow yourself to lie. Allah. Unfortunately today, we have some excuses. We have white lies and blue lies and green. In Islam, there is only one lie. Lie is haram people. That's it. That is haram. The only exception that we have in Islam is fi islah that al bayn. One, if you want to reconcile between the two people, Islam says you are allowed if it's needed. That is one. Number two, to protect the life of other mu'min. Somebody comes and asks you, is this person a Muslim? And you know if you say yes, he won't be killed. Islam says spare his life by telling him no, just to save a life. But other than that, Islam says it's haram to lie under any circumstances. You know the Prophet said about the importance of not lying and telling the truth. He said, Hal al mu'min yasrib. Can a mu'min steal? The Prophet said no, he can steal. Hal al mu'min yaktab. Can a mu'min backbat? I said naam. He asked Allah of question what moment? He said, yes, 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 until he get to the question, Halil Mu'min Yakdib. Can a Mu'min, a believer, lie? The Prophet said, no. A Mu'min can do all this, but he would not do this, which is not. Not only that, the Prophet sallallahu in one of the hadiths, he says, Ju'ila al-khaba'ithu fi bayt. All the bad things, all the haram has been put in one house, and the key to that khaba in all the bad things is lying. That is how Islam views the lie. That's why the Prophet says, Ya Ali, never ever lie under any circumstance. Then he goes through the details, don't do, don't do, don't. But my point of this hadith is that at the end of this says, Wa alayka bi salat al You say, Ya Ali, observe the night. When he gets to every advice in all the hadith, it's one time, one time, one time, until he gets to the Salat al -Layl. The right prayer, he said, Wa alayka bi Salat al -Layl. Wa alayka bi Salat al -Layl. Wa alayka bi Salat al Three times he repeated about the Salat al -Layl. To tell us the importance of the Salat. Not only that, another hadith, the Prophet says, Sharaful mu'min qiyamuhu bil -Layl. The honor and the dignity of a believer is in his weakness up in the middle of night and standing in front of Allah to perform that praise. That is the honor of a mu'min. Another hadith the Prophet says, this is between Allah and Musa. And look if you want to fit in that category. Number one, the Prophet, Imam Ali, the, the, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, is quoting from 
Prophet Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, where he says, Hadith al-Qudsi, he said, كَذَبَ مَنْ زَعَمَ أَنَّهُ يُحَبُّنِ He said, anybody who claimed that he or she loves me, Allah speaking of. If I say I love Allah, Allah said, if you say you love me, he said, it's a claim. فَإِذَا جَنَّ اللَّيْلِ نَامَ عَنِّي And then the night comes, he said, you sleep, and you don't wake up the top. So that is a claim, that's not true love. Allah has a reason. Huh? And they mentioned, he said, أَلَيْسَ كُلُّ حَبِيبَ بِحَبِيبِهِ يَخْتَلِي إِذَا جَنَّ اللَّيْلِ Habib, two lovers, husband and wife, they go to work, they go to different errands, but at the evening they all come back together, they eat together, they do things they're supposed to do, and then they go back together. Allah said, that is the sign of love. If you love me at the night, you're supposed to share your night with me, talking to me, Allah subhanahu That is, Allah talking to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Not only that, another hadith from Isa alayhi salam, they said when Maryam السلام, passed away, his son, Prophet Isa, he asked her, he spoke to her. He said, Ya Umar, can you mean me? Oh, my mother, speak to me. The Prophet Isa, talking to his mom. Hal turidina la awda ila dunya? Would you like to come back to this world? Because Isa, alayhi salam, he has the power. He can bring her back if he wishes. Because Allah gave him that power. So he's asking his mother, would you love to come back to this world? She said, yes, I would. If I can get a chance to do two things. Allah. What would that two things be? She said, لِكَيْ أُسَلِّي لِلَّهِ فِي الْلَيْنِ If I can come, and perform the prayer in the middle of night. One, two. وَأَصُومُ فِي الْيَوْمِ الشَّدِيدِ الْحَرَى And I fast when the day is very, very hot. Allah Akbar. I wish you here to witness Americans. When do we want to fast? In the winter. When the fasting comes in the middle of the summer, Allahu Akbar, some of us we have to travel to avoid not to fast in the middle of the week, in the middle of summer. We have to find excuses. Now look at Maryam Salamullah Aliya. She said, I want to come back so I can fast in the middle of the summer where the sun is very hot. You know why? You think maybe sometimes is she out of the mind? No. Do you know what she's talking about, brothers and sisters? You know what? The hadith tells us that. It says that the more your ibadah is difficult, the more your reward is high in the sight of Allah. The more your ibadah is easier, the less the rub is. In Islam, if your ibadah is tough, it's difficult, you get Allah gives you more too. If you wake up in the middle of night when people are asleep, they said that makes it a big difference for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you more tawab. And that is what Maryam alayhi salam is referring to this hadith. And then she added the last part of the hadith. He said, Ya ibni, my son, Isa, inna hadha tariqu rahibun. It is the path. The journey to Allah is really scary. This is not somebody in the Hollywood trying to scare you to make things that like video games. No, no, no. This is a person who is talking about the real reality and the fact she went through, she is that world, and she is telling her son about the importance and how the path to Allah is. That tells you how difficult that path is. Another hadith about the importance of Salat al-Layl. He said, Raka'atayn fi jawf al-Layl ahabbu ilayya min al-dunya wa mafi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, two rakah, a mu'min wake up in the middle of night to perform them. He said, it's better, I love those two rakah, better than the entire world and what exists in them. Just two rakah. Just two rakah. Sincerely, for the sake of Allah, it makes a big difference that Allah said, I prefer these two rakah better than the entire world and what exists in them. That tells you the importance of Salat al-Layl. 
Now comes to the question, brother. What is the benefit? This is not the lead as we speak. What is, the, what is the benefit of that? If I wake up in the middle of night, I left my sleep to stand up in the middle of night and perform my salat al layl my prayer, my night prayer. What do I get? Now listen to Allah telling the Prophet about this. If you have told Allah, if you wake up in the middle of night and you perform the salat al layl what are you going to get? Listen to what Allah told him. He said, وَمِنَ al-layl, And this is Surah Al-Isra. وَمِنَ al-layl فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ Ya Rasulullah, I say, wake up in the middle of night and do the tahajjud. What will happen? I say, Asa an yaba'athaka rabbuk. Your Lord will take you to a level and a position. It's a ma Mahmoud. Mahmoud, they said, Maqamun yagbituhu al-awwaloon wal A position that every human being the previous ones from Adam up to the last human being on the earth, they will all wish they have that level. But what would that what, what do you need to do to get to that level? Salat al Now quickly let me share with you, brothers and sisters, some of the benefits that our hadith mentioned about if you and I do make the salat al what are we gonna get in this world? Forget about the akhirah, forget about it, because that comes later on. But we're talking about this world. If you perform salat al what are you gonna get? Number one, they says, to sahata fil badan. When a person wakes up and they do salat al the prophet says, what are the benefits? As you will be healthy. In your own body, you feel healthier. Now, how would that be? That is a different story. But the prophet is telling you that as long as you wake up and you do salat al layl, he say, I guarantee you, you will be a healthy person. Allahu Akbar. And guess what? This is the prophet's promise. Number two, the prophet says, Kafaratul lidhunu bin nahar. If you are able to wake up in the middle of night, and you perform the salat al layl the night prayer, the Prophet said, Allah will forgive the sin of your day. Allahu Akbar. Would you like something better than this? Number three, the Prophet says, وَيُزِي وَتُزِيلُ الْوَحْشَةُ فِي الْقَبْرَ The loneliness in the grave will take away. You know, every person who dies, the first important and the most difficult time of every dead person is the first, the first night in the grave. That is the most difficult night. Now the prophet said, if you are one of those who perform salat al I said, I guarantee you that you will never get scared at the night, of the first night of your grave. Number four, I said, to be a dull wedge. You see a nur on your face. Brothers, you just take this as an example. Look at the face of people who perform this salat al People who constantly, they do perform this salat and they don't miss it. Look at their face. They have some light in their face that you don't see it in anybody else. In the hadith, the Prophet says, كَسَوْ أَنفُسَهُمْ On one of says, خَلَوْ بِرَبِّهَمْ فَكَسَاهُمْ نُورًا They set private with Allah at the night and Allah share his nur with them. I'll give you an example, brothers and sisters. When you go and you sit with somebody who sells perfume, right? Everybody comes, they take perfume and they try it. You sit there an hour, 30 minutes, by the time you leave, don't you smell good? You didn't even buy it, but just sit in there next to the somebody who is selling perfume, you get to smell good. Now Allah is saying about himself in Surah to nur Allahu Nur samawati wal ar That Nur, if you sit with him, you talk to him privately at night, definitely you have to have that Nur from him. That is what the Prophet is referring here. <coughs> Number four, he said, well, Dujli for risk. And also Salat al opens the door of risk. The systems, some of us who are in problem, difficulty, if you take a moment and you perform this Salat al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of this. And on top of that, if you want to know, a sign of mu'min, according to the Quran, it says one of the signs of the mu'min is qiyam al-layl. Kanu qalilam min al-layl ma yahja'oon. Wa bil ashari hum yastaghfiroon. Because the mu'min always try to spend the time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, let these be a, a, a starting point 
Salah the Layl can make a big difference in our lives. In this world before the hereafter. And for every one of us who will guarantee so everyone, every, 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 I'll, I'll take it a, a once a week. If Thursday is my day off, Friday is my day off, Saturday and Sunday is my day off, pick a day before your day of off to perform Salah the Layl. And I guarantee you, if you can continue this for 40 days, see how that can make difference. Just once a week. You continue every week, ever for 40 days. You see a different person inside yourself, your heart, your action. You can see that different. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do so, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, help us, Ya Rabbul Alameen, to be the better servant of yours, Ya Allah. Show us the right path and help us to stay on the right path. Show us the wrong path and help us to stay away from it, Ya Rabbi Al-Alim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa al-Asr inna l-Insana lafi khus illa al-Ladhina amanu wa amilu al-Salihat wa tawasawu bil-Haqqi wa tawasawu bil-Sabr. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبي وحبيب إله العالمين أبا القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين ذب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل my dear brothers and sisters, part of the week is that we need to remember and talk about it's the birthday of our prophet grandson, the 11th generation of his grandson called Imam al Hassan al Askari, who is known as the 11th grandson of the prophet who also served Islam in different ways during his lifetime. Dedicated his life, given every part of his life for serving this Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to his messenger. This Imam Hassan al-Askari is also known as the father of the 12th Imam of Ahlul Bayt this great personality was born in Samarra, grew up in Samarra, but he's called an Askari because he spent his life in the army camp of Bani Abbas. All his life, and he lived for only 28 years. This Imam just lived only 28 years. All his life was under the pressure of Bani Abbas. He was a great servant. Islam, that there is no time to talk about some of the things that he has done to serve Islam and save Islam as well. But peace be upon him on the day he was born, and peace be upon him on the day he died, and peace be upon him on the day he will be resurrected, inshallah. And the next thing is also to remember our Muslim, our Mu'mineen, our Muslim Ummah, <coughs> what is going on in the world today, brothers and sisters. It's very sad when you look in the world that we live today. Muslims are going through a crisis. When you look into Syria, what is going on? When you look in the other part of the world, places like Afghanistan, places like Iraq, where every single day, places like Pakistan, that every single day, you see a Muslim, a Muslim is being killed. Why? In the name of so-called, in their name, and according to their saying, in the name of these differences. But actually, when you look at it, this is not from Muslims. These are from the enemies of Islam. Trying to cause some kind of division among ourselves. This is where we need to come together, brothers and sisters. This is where we need to work together as a team and walk out of everywhere because Islam does not allow the, any kind of killing, whether it's a Muslim or non-Muslim, to begin with. 
When you go to the Quran, Quran is in front of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Man ahyaha faka'annama ahya al-nasa jami'an. Saving one life is like saving the entire humanity. That's it. It doesn't matter whether the person is a Muslim or atheist. As long as it's alive, Islam says that life should be protected. We have hadith from our Prophet that a person was sent to a hellfire because he failed to protect the life of a cat. A person was sent to heaven because he took care of the life of a, a dog in Islam. That's how Islam emphasizes about the importance of life. And today that life is no longer <coughs> important. That life is no longer value in the Muslim Ummah where the Quran is among us. But we fail to look at the Quran as it's supposed to be. Brothers and sisters, how long this will keep happening? How long did these silent have to be? We have to do something. We have to see something about this type of killing that is going on in the Muslim world. But unfortunately, the world have turned their cheek away. It's like nothing is happening there. And the Muslim Ummah also are quiet. They are not saying anything. And you know what the Prophet says about being silenced towards any injustice. It says, as suku to Allah, as suku to Allah al shaytanatun kharsa. A person who sees the truth and doesn't speak the truth is like a dumb shaytan. If we are not doing our responsibility, we fall into this category. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our ummah to unite among the umbrella of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Ya Allah, we ask you, all this part of the world that they're going through this crisis, Ya Allah, bring peace among the Ummah as soon as possible, Ya Rabbi Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you, let all of us see the truth as they are and follow the truth as you ordered us to do, Ya Rabbi Allah. Ya Allah, let us see the wrong as wrong and help us to stay away from it. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وقنا عذاب النار ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطينا الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'abud wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الارض الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم هو الذي بعث في الأمين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ذلال مبين وآخرين منهم لما يلحقوا بهم وهو العزيز الحكيم ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل الأذين مثل الذين حملوا التوراة ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الخمار يحمل أسفارا بئس مثل القوم الذين كذبوا بآيات الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين قل يا أيها الذين هادوا إن زنتم أنكم أولياء لله من دون الناس فتمنوا الموت إن كنتم صادقين ولا يتمنونه أبدا بما قدمت أيديهم والله عليم بالظالمين قل إن الموت الذي تفرون منه فإنه ملاغيكم ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون يا أيها الذين آمنوا 
إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا غذيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض فابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لأنكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهما انفضوا إليها وتركوك قائما قل ما عند الله خير من اللهب ومن التجارة والله خير الرازقين ربنا فرق لنا صبرا وتبقى ظلامنا وانصرنا على الروم الكافرين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن خلده ربنا لك الحمد الله Before you 